So uh, I got the walls up enough to where I'm going to start the electrical process now because I need to do the bed frame and I don't want to do the bed frame without doing the electrical and components under the bed first. So um, these are OWL batteries. You can get them from BigBattery.com. It's uh, 170 amp hour batteries each. Um, we're going with a Vict full Victron system. This is the Multi Plus 3000 uh, inverter. I'm going to show you how to wire this up. Um, we've got a solar charge controller also. Everything is Victron. Uh, most everything is going to be Victron. So uh, I'm going to get everything over here uh, and start mounting it on the wall, explaining how to wire it up. Um, kind of a step-by-step. -step. Uh, the problem is, is that everybody's build is different, so you may not need what I need. Uh, I just know what I need. So uh, we're going with a... 12-volt uh, air conditioning unit that's going to be running mainly just off of battery and solar only, um, which is um, something that you need to take in consideration. That That's why I have four batteries here. That's for the fridge and the AC unit. and um, Also, I've got an um, alternator uh, charger, Victron charger. I've got two of them, actually. Um, so anyway, uh, this is step one. I mounted the inverter on the wall there. Um, it has to be off the floor so it can breathe. And it also needs to be at least 300 millimeters or about four inches from, uh, whatever's above it. Uh, that's so it can, uh, <clears throat> radiate the heat upward and not stay in that heat. So you definitely need to have good ventilation. Uh, our water tank's going to go right about in here, and the AC unit either over there or uh, next to the uh, electrical area. I'm not exactly sure yet. Uh, it just really depends on how I get it all fit together. Uh, I might put the batteries over there above the wheel well. I don't really know yet, so I'm just going to start here uh, with all of the electrical systems and then work my way over to the right. So... I'm going to dive into it. Hey, everybody. Okay, so um, this is the Multi Plus 3000 unit right here on my left. I've got the smo uh, smart controller, solar controller here, charge controller. I have two uh, Orion... Uh, alternator uh, DC to DC chargers here. Um, I got two because it's not pulling enough amps with just one and my alternator can do a heck of a lot more so I decided to go with two. There is the um, the uh, combiner box for the solar which I'll open that up. It's a bit overkill because uh, I only am using I'm only using positive and negative, one of them, and there's room for, if you want to run in series and parallel at the same time, we're only using two, I only have three solar panels, so, um, but this seemed to be the best uh, one uh, for my needs. That is the Lynx uh, distributor, which is going to be distributing all the power so everything is going to be coming off of the links uh, which is going to be monitored if you know anything about this stuff i'm not going to get into explaining what each device is you probably already know what it is if not you should look it up i don't want this video to be too long there's a lot of things i still have to put on the wall there the servo uh, smart battery controller um, a couple other pieces here for fuses and things which I'm going to show um, we've got shore power 30 amp and 20 amp for the outlets I've got my 12 volt uh, forgot what that's called uh, what is that called again fuse block for all the DC stuff there's the batteries which are yet to be wired up which have the Anderson connectors and a bunch of fuses and stuff Okay, so this is actually really easy here. Um, not much to explain. We've got, oh, uh, 
let's talk about gauge wire. I've got two aught wire here, positive and negative, that's going to be going to the charge controller. This is overkill. Um, this was actually an accidental order. I was supposed to get four aught wire, and uh, well, I've got a whole bunch of this stuff, and it was outside the return window, and I spent like $300 on this wire. So I'm going to be using the 2 watt wire. You should use 4 watt. Um, so it's going to be going positive and negative, and it's going to be going over to a 400 amp fuse on the Lynx distributor, which is going to be this one right here. Um, that's positive, and then negative is underneath here. There it is. Um, so we're going to go straight from there to there. That is our first step. Um, then you can see here, I'm only going to be using a few of these. ACN, what is that? Um, somebody asked. That is your shore power. We're going to be using uh, Triplex Anchor 10-3 wire, which I've got a bunch of that stuff. I used it for our outlets as well. Um, which I've got all done and tied in the uh, ten, the ten three triplex Anchor, and that would be black red uh, black white and green uh, and for this wire it's going to be black that's positive white that's negative green that's ground so that's the only difference with that wire uh, is that you have to remember that black is positive uh, because that's the AC lines so obviously black in the DC system is negative and red is positive. So anyway, so we've got our red positive uh, here. Now, I did say that wrong. I'm using red and black wire here for the AC, but that's okay because I have a bunch of it. So anyway, so very simple, just any of them for positive, any of them for negative. ACN is going to be the triplex 10-3 wire that's going to go to the shore power connector that's going to be on the outside of the van. AC out, that is for your AC outlets. So the 10-3, we're going to use another 10-3 triplex anchor wire going from there to the 20 amp. Uh-oh, I missed something. You need to go from the 10-3 uh, shore power the positive is going to be going to the 30 amp here for your fuse. So don't forget that. So this is going to be in between uh, your shore and it's going to be in between your AC electrical outlets. So I'll see, show you in the next video. It all wired up. Um, not sure if I'm going to get to it tonight, but I've got a whole lot of wiring to do. Um, see you in the next one. Hey everybody, okay, so this is video two. Um, go ahead and show you what's going on here, kind of a step-by-step. -step. Now, I advise that you use Anchor wire. Um, you can actually use smaller gauge wire if you're using Anchor. Otherwise, all of this stuff should be um, 4 aught wire if you're using Anchor for all the components you can use 8 aught wire um, alright so let me start with this which I think I already did we've got positive and negative positive and negative going to the battery terminals negative positive and that's going over to the Lynx distributor Lynx distributor uh, for the negative positive for the inverter is going to be 400 amps starting on the left hand side there 400 amp fuse uh, we've got one triplex 10 3 anchor wire going into the output for AC um, I'm sorry, let, what is that? AC1 output. I haven't put in the AC1 input yet, which is your shore power, which will also be the Anchor Triplex 10-3. Um, okay, so the output is coming over here, and it's not hooked up yet. 
So I just want to explain what's going on here. So this is our uh, charge controller. We've got the negative and positive to the PV controller box, which is this. And that is coming into the negative and positive on this breaker. This is ground, this DC negative. This is unusable here. And then under here, there's one hole for the DC negative. That's going to be going to the ground, which I haven't hooked up yet. Okay, so I've connected the, um, I think these are MC3 or MC4 connectors uh, for the solar. So you're going to have to get a, a crimper on Amazon to do that. So I've cut that, and that goes into the wall and up to the solar panel. So that's hooked in. Ne uh, and we and this is the advice of some of the I'm consulting with. Um, use to use uh, yellow for negative. So I'm using yellow for negative for everything. So anyway, so that's the PV controller, the yellow and the red, positive and negative, going to PV positive negative battery positive negative goes down and over to the 100 amp um, fuse for the Lynx distributor. And then I have the two Orions, which is the inverter chargers. Um, I'm not completely done with this yet, but we've got negative and positive, negative and positive. They're all four of them are coming in and I'm you can see here I've got them using one fuse here which is perfectly fine so the two positives and the two negatives underneath and you can see here how you get to negative is under there that's a 100 amp fuse as well um, the negative and positive negative positive input is going to be coming from this battery this huge battery cable that you don't necessarily need to use a, a cable this large this is a two aught wire uh, should have been a four aught wire don't make that mistake uh, same thing with this I think I explained in the other video the only reason why I'm using it because I got a bunch of it and I can't return it so um, it doesn't hurt it's overkill it's just not necessary but that's also the same 2 watt wire should be 4 watt wire um, but I'm going to use the 2 watt wire for all the larger wire connections that I need alright so the input negative and positive negative and positive that is going to go over to here where it's going to be a um, 100 amp uh, let me see if I can find it that's going to go to a 100 amp blue C fuse and then it's going to go to this wire here negative is going to go to a little terminal that I ordered from Amazon this is going to go to ground so this is going to go to our ground terminal the the negative from the battery of the car and all of these grounds I've got a ground which I forgot to mention that goes off the side of the solar charge controller there's a ground right there that I haven't hooked into yet for the um, multi-plus inverter. There's a ground right here in the PV controller box or combiner box. And then there's a ground right here on the Lynx distributor. 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 Um, and that's all going to go to this little little terminal that's going to go right here on the wall and I have already wired to the chassis on one of these ground to chassis and this is also 4 gauge wire I'm sorry 8 aught anchor wire sorry about that all of the wires that I'm using is 8 aught uh, you can get on Amazon so that's it for now uh, I hope this was helpful it's pretty easy it's just very time consuming to get it nice and neat and organized I chose this configuration because well you can see the charge controller the wires go straight down in between the two Orions and then the Orions go right and it's all very neat I still have a lot to mount here I've got the Serbo GX I've got the 30 amp and 20 amp breaker box 
for shore power and the outlets, which I have yet to do. And then I've got a main master cutoff switch, which I have to wire in. And then we've got the four batteries, uh, which are inside with the Anderson connectors. And um, that's going to have an ANL 400 amp fuse, uh, which I'll show you um, here shortly. See you in the next video. Hey guys, um, <clears throat> I've done quite a lot since the last video. I don't exactly remember where I left off. Um, that's my bug zapper over there, not the electrical systems. Um, so, I'm going to try to remember where I left off. So, um, I've now got the positive and negative um, input for the the two Orion um, alternator chargers, and the inputs are both going to. I've got a 100 amp fuse right there. Uh, those two red um, are positive going into the two Orions. One's going that way. One's going that way. Uh, the negatives uh, are both going to this pole here. Now, before we get into that pole, I'd like to tell you that um, I've got the positive from the battery, the main vehicle battery that's under the seat, and the negative that's going to under the seat, going into the wall there. Um, and that goes to the pole. Now, <clears throat> I've got a lot of things going to this pole. Uh, this not only is negative, but it's also ground. So all of the um, the ground wires. So we've got a ground wire coming from the inverter. We've got a ground wire coming from the smart solar charge controller. We've got a ground coming from... They're all white, though, or just to let you know. The PV combiner box, which I'll show you. Negative ground. I've got a negative coming off of the Lynx distributor right there in the center. Let's see if I can point to it. Boop. Um, I've got ground from in, coming in the wall down there in the hole. I've got the um, an eight. These are all eight gate eight gauge anchor anchor wire. I've got one coming from the chassis coming into the wall. It's actually, uh, it's mounted the chassis behind the wall somewhere around there. And that comes through that hole. So it's going to the chassis as well as the negative to the battery of the vehicle. Um, also coming in through that hole is the solar uh, ground and there's another ground coming in there from something, but I don't remember what. Um, anyway, in total, there's quite a lot. So they're all going to this negative pole right there. I also, again, I've got negative, a lot of negative going to that pole. So example, I've got all the negatives, again, from the Orion going to the pole. Um... I've got, yeah, again, this is negative from the PV. If I said ground, I apologize. So I've got a lot of negatives going to ground here. Now, let's move on. Since I last made a video, I don't remember exactly where I left off here. Um, I think I, exp I did explain these, and I explained, I believe, this one which goes to uh, the smart solar charge controller. So that's uh, a 100 amp for the smart solar charge controller. And that's gonna be a battery, positive and negative, right there. PV for the smart solar charge controller is gonna go right into the combiner box. I'll show you again, positive and negative into those breakers. Now, uh, we've got a smart shutoff 
Um, the everything here is Victron. So this is a Victron uh, Smart Battery Protect. So uh, that is a 60 amp right there all the way on the right. It goes directly from the 60 amp to the in of the battery protect. And then the out goes out and to this guy, the 12 volt um, panel. I'm not sure, forgot what the actual name is of that. But it's the 12 volt uh, for the for all the 12 volt system. So you can see I've already wired up coming in uh, from the hole there. It's coming up, and I've got my fridge, lights, power, my max air fan, bath fan, and fridge fan. There'll be a couple other things added to that, but uh, that's good enough for now. So I think that's pretty much everything. Um, oh, not quite. I do not have the shore power in yet because I still have to uh, to weld something which I'm not going to do because I'm not a welder. I'm going to have somebody weld something on the bottom of the van and it's going to come up into this little breaker box here which I'm about to explain. Uh, that's the 30 amp and 20 amp. 30 amp for 30 amp for the uh, shore power, 20 amp for the outlets. So let me explain that for a second. So I've got, right now, I've got the AC power 20 amp, um, uh, the triplex anchor wire, the white one right there. It's going zzzz, and it's going up and into this box here. I've got three wires in here. The reason why I have three separate, oh, I've got more than three wires, but three separate sets of wires because one is driver side AC power, and the other is passenger side AC power, and then the third wire is the one that's going from the um, the inverter. So this is the inverter. It's coming up, and then the the black is power. Remember, this is AC AC, so it's black. So the power main line from the inverter comes here, and then it goes to my driver side and passenger side right here. The rest of them get tied together. Um, I left these off so I could show you. I just soldered all three of them together. So I'm bypassing, obviously, the ground and the negative. I'm bypassing the breaker. So really, you're only using positive for the breaker. So I'm not an electrician. I'm not here to advise you on... Well, I am advising you, but you should do your own research because I can't be responsible for you to do this wrong and blow yourself up. So um, just be careful. Um, so anyway, so I've got my uh, my 20 amp done. I've got both of these soldered, and that's some heat shrink there. Uh, I soldered that pretty good. And I'm going to use some heat shrink and... Put that on there and stuff it into that box and close it up for now. The right one is my 30 amp for the shore, which I don't have yet. So that's going to be a lot of wires coming into there, but I have to fit it in there because it's running out of room. I hope this was helpful on how to wire your Victron system. Uh, that's pretty much it for now. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to finish up with the batteries. There's the batteries. I've got a couple things that need to be finished installed. Uh, we need to give it power. So it needs to go from the batteries, which are the uh, Anderson connectors, to a smart shunt, to um, an, a 400 amp ANL fuse, and then it's going to go right there, positive and negative, to the Lynx distributor. Then I have to connect the Serbo GX to the Victron MultiPlus inverter which I can do later so I just have to get all this done and cleaned up and that's pretty much it uh, I'll show you the final video tomorrow uh, I hope this was helpful there's not any videos at all on YouTube on how to wire a Victron system I think that this is the first one uh, I looked for quite a while and there were no videos on how to wire up a Victron system now keep in mind everybody's needs are different so um, you may not need two Orions. You may not want to charge from your 
inverter. You don't need it. You might just want a charge controller for your for your solar panels, which is fine. Um, so you could just do the inverter, the smart solar charge controller, the links, and uh, the smart battery protect, which is not required, by the way. I just have it just in case. Um, you don't have to have that. Your 12-volt fuse box there uh, and a, a negative pole. And um, again, that's a 100-amp connector. Um, you don't need those. If you omit the two Orions and you don't want to charge with an inverter, you actually don't need either of these. So you would just mount all of the negative and um, and the, uh, the grounds to chassis. Uh, so you might need a, like a bus bar um, or something like that to connect to. Uh, or you could use one of these poles right here to connect it all to and then uh, have a wire run to chassis. Um, I was told by my expert consultant that I use on this stuff that um, because I'm running from negative uh, from the from the van batteries, the starter batteries, uh, that also is grounded. So I'm using an eight gauge a wire to the chassis. So really, it's grounded twice. It's grounded from the the batteries and it's grounded. Um, it's grounded to the chassis. If you remove the battery, the the negative there, um, which obviously the van has its own ground somewhere uh, in the engine or underneath the seat or something. So if we remove that, we should really use a bigger gauge wire for ground. So keep that in mind. If you're not going to be using uh, your alternator, you should use a bigger ground wire. Uh, I'll show you another video tomorrow on the cleaning up and finishing up of everything and uh, the final product. I hope I didn't miss anything. I think I got every wire explained in this video. Uh, the next part is uh, getting all that uh, the battery stuff mounted, like I said, and then uh, configuration of the Victron system. See you in the next video. Back at it again. All right, so let me explain so far what's going on. That's our master cutoff switch here, which I just join two of those together as close as possible uh, put some heat shrink on it that's our battery shut off and then that goes to the a and l fuse the 400 amp fuse that will go directly to positive battery uh somewhere around here right there okay then we've got our smart shunt uh two battery minus which is right there um and then that goes to the links. You can see both, both of them go to the links. Okay, so what we have here is we've got the VBAT and auxiliary. So VBAT is going to go to uh, directly to the positive before the fuse, remember, before the fuse. Because uh, obviously if the fuse blows, you're not going to have power to the smart shunt so it needs to be before the fuse um, also an auxiliary to monitor the battery uh, the car battery uh, voltage uh, you would use auxiliary in this case and go directly before the fuse directly to the car battery which is right there next um, let me see what else have I done Oh, I've got the Serbo GX here, which is connected. Uh, got two connectors, one going, which, what is the connector called? Uh, hang on. The VE Direct cable. I've got two VE Direct cables right now. One of them is going into the smart solar charge controller. Right there. The other which is the same cable, is going into the oh, into this, the shunt. Power for the Serbo GX is going, again, directly, directly, to power before the fuse. Not after the fuse. Before the fuse. This is in case of a power loss or 
if the fuse blows, you still need power to that device. It's very low voltage, so it's not going to do much. Also, I was told by my expert uh, that in a very low voltage situation, you still want your Serbo GX to work to try to troubleshoot the situation. So it needs to be before the fuse. Negative. Uh, oh, also, these do not have negative. It's just direct up to positive. The Serbo GX is negative and positive. So positive there, and I put negative right there to the ground. I've got a Cat5 cable going up to the um, inverter. And then, of course, I've got a USB and a um, HDMI cable, which is all in one cable that goes to the screen display. I also have a little wireless card that it came with that goes into one of the USB slots there. Uh, that about covers it. I was just told uh, by my expert guy that uh, I have to use remote on these Orions or it'll drain my batteries, which I did not realize. Um, the remote goes, take that cap out, um, and one of those is going to be for remote. Not sure which one yet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole in between the two Orions right down in the floor. And it's going to go to my trailer hitch. And I'm going to tap into uh, one of the 12 volt powers there. So it just needs to know when the vehicle is running. So the Orions turn on. Um, I was told that if they're running all the time, it'll draw uh, the batteries down in the vehicle in about an hour. Which I did not realize that until today. So I'm going to drill a hole. Uh, just more work. That's all. <laughs> um, pretty much that's it. So remote I have to do that goes into the remote for the Orions. And then I have to connect the two batteries, which are already done here on the Anderson connectors, which I have them both going into a single connection there, single ring, ring terminal. And they're going to go to the batteries. And that's it. And then the rest is configuration. Uh, which I have to dive into that uh, a little bit later this evening. It's raining right now, so I'm going to try to uh, work in the rain and, and somehow get the remote done. And, um, well, that's it. Uh, that's pretty much wiring the whole Victron system, or at least my Victron system. Hopefully you pulled some good information out of this for yourself. There's going to be a lot of configuration, though. Um, have to dive onto that into another video. This is just uh, getting it all connected and, and working, which there's not really any videos on. So anyway, I'll see you in the next video. I'll give you an update when it's all completely hooked up. Hey guys, so I just ran the remote wire. Don't worry, I'm going to plug that hole uh, with a clamp so it's not on the sharp metal. And I just ran it down back to, I found a, a 12 volt uh, in a sensor here. Well, it's, it's a little close, I'm sorry. But in the back right here, there's a little sensor mm, that goes up there. Anyway, I found 12 volt in this plug. Um, that's where I ran it to. To be specific, it's on the other side. It's not on this side. It's on the other side. It's the second one down. It's blue. I'm not sure the color combination there. I can't really see it. Blue with white stripes. It's the second one down on the other side. And that'll give you 12 volt power when the vehicle is on. And then, uh, try to get off this thing here. I've got it run up through this hole, and then I'm about to run it into the two Orions. I took the little jumpers out. Hey guys, alright, so I want to let you know some good news. Um, I'm going to be 100% transparent on this. I did not have one error 
in this entire process, which I'm very proud of. Um, I did have assistance with uh, how to set it up with some diagrams and such um, from a professional Victron installer. Um, besides that, I didn't have any issues at all. Uh, there is one problem that I have that's not really a problem, and that is one of my Orions is different than the other. Um, it's right now it's disconnected. I have that plug you can see is dangling off is disconnected. Um, I am the one on the right is a smart Orion. The one on the left is not a smart Orion. So I am going to replace the one on the left with a smart one. It's all working. Everything's working. Inverter, solar charge controller is working. Everything's working. Orion is working. Uh, it's all tested and running. Um, I tested the wall outlets. That's all working. I haven't tested shore power yet, and there's a reason for that, which I'd like to dive into. Uh, the expert that I am uh, consulting with says that you cannot get into the back end of this uh, MultiPlus so the, or the inverter unless you are a Victron installer or distributor or installer. Uh, he has special software that allows him and special hardware and software that allows him to connect and configure this device. So he is going to tomorrow remotely connect to this to change some settings. It's all working, the wall outlets and everything. He's going to check the settings for shore power and make sure that that is set up properly. So I can't really advise you on that uh, except... Um, if you call a Victron installer, they could remotely connect to your Serbo or uh, to your Serbo GX once it's on Wi-Fi, and they can configure it for you. So I'm going to give a recommendation to the man himself. Uh, the company is called Chrome Yellow Corp, and he is a school bus converter. I did consult with him on electrical systems for our bus, going boundless bus. Um, so he was very helpful, and uh, you can get an estimate from him. Uh, depending on how much time you need, obviously, will affect how much it's going to cost. Um, he helped me out with a diagram on basically what needs to get plugged into what. And then I did consult with him today on the proper configuration for each one of the devices. So I'm a little reluctant to give you my configurations because your configuration might be different. Um, again, I if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to start a fire. Um, you're going to cause a problem. You're going to blow your stuff up. I'm not an electrician. I am advising you to consult with a professional. So if you do it yourself, that's up to you. Um, I will give you my configuration, but you have to understand it's my configuration and mine alone. I've got four Smart Owl 170 amp batteries here. So you have to take that into consideration when you see my amp hour um on my settings, uh, obviously the Orion is going to be pretty general because it's going to be using a couple settings like uh, when to stop charging, when to start charging, and it picks up the amperage from, you remember from the last couple videos, that's the positive and negative to the battery on the vehicle. So once it hits 13, I think it's 13.6, it'll start pulling from, or start charging the, uh, the batteries from the Orions. Once it drops below a, th a th certain threshold, they stop pulling from the batteries. So it knows when the alternator is running and when the alternator is not running. So it knows when to stop 
Also, I've got those uh, little plugs there plugged in so it knows when the vehicle is on and when it's not on, which is great. When turning on your system for the first time, first thing you need to make sure is your breaker is off if you're if you're using my configuration or something similar. The breaker's off from the batteries to the vehicle. The breaker from the PV combiner box is not on. The main cutoff switch is off. The batteries are going to be off when you plug them in, obviously. So the first thing you need to do is when you're ready to turn this on and test it, you turn on all your batteries. Then you use a uh, multimeter and you'll test it right there off the terminals to make sure it's the correct voltage. Make sure it's not a negative voltage. Um, and I think I read... Well, I think it was what it was on the screen here. 13 volts from the battery. Um, I went ahead and turned that on. And then everything started lighting up. Um, and then you got to install the Victron. It's a Victron app. Uh, Victron Connect, I think. And then you will be able to see all these devices on Bluetooth. Uh, that you, you'll need to connect to each one. Um, update the firmware. Well, first you have to connect this to Wi-Fi, and then you need to start. Uh, then you need to connect to each device and update the firmware one at a time. Um, I believe since everything is off, the first thing you're going to see is you'll see the uh, the smart shunt, which needs to be configured. You'll see the battery. Well, that's a, not a smart battery protect. I'm sorry. You have to configure that manually. By the way, that needs to be on... Well, my configuration is 6. So you use a jumper. You take you take this jumper off, and then you connect a, a wire jumper. I took a wire, connected it to the... I connected it to the top port of this. There's two, there's two little connector pins. I plug, unplug that... And the top one, I held a wire to it, and then I held the other end to negative. And then that little screen, it's on, where is the little screen there? It's blinking. Okay, it's got a little dot that's blinking. I waited for that to go from one, two, three, four, five, six, and then I disconnected from negative and uh, into ground there. Uh, then I plug the jumper back in. Then it's on setting 6. Setting 6, uh, I'll get into another video. I forgot which what voltage that is. Um, hmm. I'll, I'll let you know in the, in the next video what amperage that is uh, or what, what wattage or voltage that is. Sorry, what voltage that is. And basically what that is is that's going to cut off the DC system here um, so everything that's connected to DC will shut off the Victron multi plus inverter is different that is going to be connected that's that has its own settings to disconnect um, so we'll dive into that so once once you have that configured that configured then you should be able to see, or you can turn this on. So you go ahead and turn the breaker on there, and then you can configure that one. Uh, then you can configure what you can in that one, in the inverter. And then you can turn the breaker on here, and then you should see your one or two Orions. Um, and then you can connect to that, which you'll have to do firmware for all of this again and again. Uh, it's very time consuming, but it must be done. And then you can configure these guys. They're, they're all pretty easy to configure. Um, I will let you know in the next video. I'm going to go ahead and print out my settings uh, and let you know what I have. But it's all done. If you want to see, that light is not connected to the van. Um, but you can see uh, it's at 99% battery. We've got 
zero PV so that we've got no solar coming in. Obviously, it's nighttime. Um, we're drawing 2.8 amps from the things, the little things that are on right now. We've got zero AC load right now in the wall, which I'll go ahead and turn on a lamp. I'm just going to turn on my bug zapper, and it should say that it's, yep, there we go, 21 watts drawing. So it shows we're drawing 4.4 .4 amps now. Go ahead and turn that off. It's not necessary. So you can see the little ball is going from the battery to the DC power right now. Um, and then if I turn on the AC load, the balls turn on and it's inverting. Oh, my screen turned off after 60 seconds, which you can change. Um, yeah, it shows 21 watts, but the little balls aren't moving. I don't know if it's because the screen went to sleep. Let's see. Well, I had little balls going. Anyway, you saw them. I'm going to go ahead and... I'm going to turn the AC off. I'm going to go ahead and turn the vehicle on so you can see... Oh, there goes the little balls. You can see the balls are going from the battery to the DC power. When I turn on the vehicle, it's going to go the other way. It's going to be drawing from the alternator, from the Orion. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. If I can see. Alright, I want to get there fast enough so you can see. Now, it's set to check, I believe, every 60 seconds. So, the vehicle's running right now, and it needs to pick up... Ah, uh, it needs to pick up that the that the vehicle's running and now we can start taking from the alternator. Oh, there it goes. It's taking 383 watts. 29 amps. Orion charger is a 30 watt 30 amp charger. I'm only using one right now cuz I have to replace that second one cuz it's not the right one. And that's it. So, I'm going to do one more video for you to show you the settings. I'm going to print them out. And that's it. You guys are on your own. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'll answer what I can. Again, you should consult with a professional. I did. Um, again, uh, if you want to consult with the guy that I consulted with, his name is Charles. He's with Chrome Yellow Corp, which is a school, school bus conversion company out in uh, Colorado um, so you can look them up Chrome Yellow Corp anyway Charles Kern uh, is the guy to talk to to get an estimate on that so basically what he did for me I, I'm very mechanically inclined and uh, also was an IT guy for a long time so this was I mean it was a lot of work very time consuming uh just to answer your questions, uh, if if you're going to ask, um, I'd say this took me, well, this is a two-day install. I'd say it was about 14 to 15 hours, give or take. I didn't time it, but it was about, I'd say, 15 hours. Um, be prepared. Be patient. When in doubt, consult with a professional. Oh, I did not. I, I also I didn't wire in the uh, the um, shore power yet. I've got a uh, thirty amp shore hour shore power connector. I still have to mount to the bottom of the van, but I've got the triplex wire going down into that same hole I had to drill today because I needed the remote twelve volt remote for the Orions. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. I don't think there's very many videos showing the installation. 
I don't have any of the 12 volt uh, items set up yet because all my wires aren't going into anything. They're just sitting there. I may throw something on there to test it, but I know it's working. Everything else is working. I, it's all set up properly, so. I'll just give you a nice little video here to show you slowly in case you want to see. Alright guys, one more video. I'm going to let you know what my settings are. And that's it. See you in the next one. Alright guys, this is going to be my last video. Um, again, these are my settings for my configuration. So if you're doing something similar, uh, this will be helpful to you. Um, the first one is the DC to DC charger. That's your Orion uh, alternator charger. Uh, there's two settings or two pages of settings. There's engine shutdown detection. Make sure that that is enabled. Uh, these are my user defined configurations uh, for starting voltage, delayed start voltage, shutdown voltage, delayed start voltage, delay. Um, so make sure that you set these settings properly. This is the settings in the Orion. Um, also user defined you have to enable the charger and then set the different voltage and different settings the smart shunt um, this is of course for my four uh, owl batteries um, so make sure that you set all of these correctly consult with a professional if you must uh, I was told by my expert consultant not to calibrate and not to synchronize these batteries. The system needs to do it on its own to get the full charge and then also completely depleted. So you don't want to do, use these. Um, all of these, I had to change almost all of these settings for uh, the smart shunt. The next one is going to be the solar charge controller. And here's all the settings that I have in there. And that's it. I hope this video was helpful. It was a long one. See you in the next one. Hey guys, so there's one more video that I thought would be helpful, uh, and that is my wiring diagram. A couple of these things are not accurate. I've got three 300 watt panels on the roof uh, they're running a series which means they're strung together and there are two wires coming in one positive one negative you'll have to get a long positive and negative I got 25 feet for each uh, to string to the positive side of one panel and then the negative side to the third panel all coming down and they go into the combiner box, which I've showed you all this before, but this makes it a little bit easier to see. It comes into the combiner box. Uh, I actually omitted there was going to be a midnight solar breaker, but my setup did not require that. So I omitted that, and it comes down into the charge controller um, and then goes into using 8 um, eight two wire uh, all of this is anchor wire of course which I've already explained eight two positive negative coming into the links distributor um, the DC to DC charger um, I have two of these and they're just wired up together um, so both positive and positive are wired together negative and negative are wired together so let's go up here I've got chassis ground uh, and then I've got the starter battery, which is the one that's underneath the seat coming in. It goes to the, it, this actually is bigger. It's a, uh, uh, because I've got two DC to DC chargers. I've got a hundred amp blue C inline breaker instead of a 40. Comes into the two 
uh, DC to DC chargers, which go run together and go into the one fuse in the Lynx distributor. This is a 100 amp fuse. I've already explained all this, but 100 amp, 100 amp for the charge controller. Um, and then we've got the 12 volt DC block, um, which, you know, I've got power running from the Lynx distributor coming in into the Victron smart battery protect, then the fuse block, and then negative from the Lynx distributor to the DC flu, uh, fuse box. Um, over here, we've got um, just the AC distribution panel, which is going to be the 20, the 20 amp and the 30 amp shore power. 20 amp for the wall sockets, 30 amp for the shore power coming in. That comes off the Victron Multi Plus, and then we've got the Serbo GX using the um, RJ um, RJ45 connector or a uh, computer internet cable. Victron Multi Plus, which is uh, the inverter, it's got positive and negative. We're using the two gauge. You can use four gauge um, Anchor wire. I actually, because I explained in a previous video, I use two. 2 watt wire, which is very large, coming into the Lynx distributor. On the previous videos I just showed you, um, I have it pretty much configured like this. I've got, uh, starting from the left, it's the Multi Plus. Uh, and I think I might have these reversed on in the inside of the van, but that doesn't matter. Um, we've got the battery bank, positive going to the 400 amp a &L fuse then going to the blue c300 amp on off switch that's the red on off switch going to the lynx distributor on hot then we've got the negative going to the victor smart shunt and then the lynx distributor so anyway very helpful guide here I'll slowly go up so you can take a look at it that's it see you later